Okay, hello there folks, nice to see you again. Ronnie Romance here, coming to you with some new and improved audio equipment. I hope you notice. This is a companion to my last video on how I like to build my bikes. Go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. Seemingly what most of you liked in this last video and wanted to know more about was my Rode Gravdad Campagnolo 10-speed to Shimano 8 index system. This is my chosen transmission for roadieing and gravel dadding. So let's take a closer look and see how this thing works and how you could set it up on your own bike. So as you can see here, these are Campagnolo Record. Uh, DC with some nail polish. Carbon fiber, folks. Carbon fiber. It's the future. We're gonna make entire bikes out of this stuff someday. You wait. So these are from the late aughts. Uh, I think they have the best lever shape. Um, Campagnolo did this shape for quite some time until it went to 11 speed. Look at that, even a carbon fiber shift blade, well, <laughs> a veneer, pretty funny. So you may be wondering, Ronnie, why would we go through all the trouble of using an eight speed cassette with a 10 speed shifter? Well. The answer is because Campagnolo shifters are the best. Oh, wow. And they only work 10 speed with Campagnolo specific 10 speed cassettes. Presumably, back in the day, Campagnolo with their own free hub body only wanted you to use their hubs, which are very good hubs. There's no reason that you wouldn't use them. And so, consequently, conse consequentially, consequentially, they made the spacing just a little bit different so that it wouldn't quite work. Maybe one or two gears would be out of, out of whack and the other ones would work. That would ensure that you used a Campagnolo free hub body. Uh, now the reason why we wouldn't use a Campagnolo 10 speed cassette with a Campagnolo free hub body is because those hubs are very rare. Campagnolo really only has ever made up a small percentage of the market share. Um, and Shimano free hub bodies are just everywhere, uh, I'd say. Roughly 90% of the free hub bodies that you find out there, 90% of the hubs, probably 95% of the hubs ever made in the last 20 to 30 years were Shimano free hub body. I don't know that as a fact, but it's just what I've seen. And also, Campagnolo really just assumes that if you need a cog larger than a 20 tooth in the rear, then you shouldn't be on Campagnolo. And I respect that. <laughs> the wide range cassettes have always been relegated to Campy's lower end, which is still good, but it's not as nice of a Shimano cassette that you could buy with a wider range because of all the eight speed mountain bike stuff you could find out there. But really what they weren't counting on was the backwards compatibility, because I'm sure no one at Campagnolo ever considered that people would go backwards and say, oh, uh, Eight-speed cassette is fine, especially uh, in the mindset of modern-day Campagnolo, where they fit 13 gears back there now. So, uh, Campagnolo was also the first to do 10 and 11, mind you. I think SRAM did 12, and then Campy did 13. Where will it end? <laughs> With a one by, you really do need all those gears in the back. But if you run a two by and you feel like you need more than nine speeds in the rear, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and because I, I've never really, never really noticed much difference after nine. Eight is great, nine is fine. Why are Campagnolo shifters the best? They have a nice 
click to them. They're, they, you, there's no accidentally shifting Campagnolo. You could feel it engage. It's very mechanical feeling. Whereas I've always felt that Shimano and SRAM were very light touch. Feels, they feel cheaper. They feel a lot cheaper. Um, that's my opinion. Love to hear yours also. In modern times, I don't think anything looks better than this. Not that this is by any means modern anymore. So record was the top of the line group. Still is. Well, I guess it's super record now. And we are shifting the Shimano Ultegra front derailleur on this 3246. And then back here, we've got a nine speed Ultegra rear derailleur and an eight speed cassette. Okay, so first I'm going to shift all the way down into the small sprocket. And then I'm going to look for my screwdriver. There it is. And I want to set the limit screw just as you would an ordinary derailleur. Nice and centered to start. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure I'm all the way shifted down. That's this paddle right here. So I'm all the way shifted into my smallest gear. As I know I'm in the lowest gear or highest gear, whatever you want to call it, take in all the slack from my barrel adjuster. So I'm going to tighten that up. My limit screw for the largest cog or your lowest gear and then the two gears afterwards that would make up the 10 for the 10 speed would become the dummy gears. So as long as that limit screw, your upper limit screw is set, uh, you won't have to worry about those two dummy gears. Okay, now that we got this all set up, we're going to be taking a lot of turns in on this barrel adjuster. So let's shift up one. Nothing happens. We're just going to crank this adjuster until something does. There she goes. There we go. All right. We're in our next gear. Shift down. Nice and smooth. Okay. Now let's go with our next gear. Looks good. A little bit funky here. Just now remember when you're working with a barrel adjuster in the rear derailleur, turn it counterclockwise, it's going to go towards your larger gear, and if you turn it clockwise, it's going to go towards your smallest gear. So keep that in mind, it's pretty intuitive. All right, let's go to the next gear, see what we got. All right, looks good. Next gear, there we are in our big one. All right, now let's go back down. Don't, don't, don't mind that sound. I've just got to trim the front derailleur, that's all. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Oh yeah, that's nice. Did I say that was, did I mention that was nice? What's cool about Campy, say I'm heading into a sprint, a bunch sprint, I just want to dump the gears. And I'm like, okay. Oh, I'm winning a sprint now. Okay. Okay, and then when it comes to the front, yeah, let's get into the middle of our range back here. All right, when we're shifting the front, look at that. So Campy has this cool like trim function, I'm getting some really nice indexing in the Campy front shifter. See, I could trim my gear accordingly so I can avoid rubbing throughout my gear range. Really the best front shifting in the business. Look at that. It's essentially, 
It's almost a power ratchet, honestly. That's really it. Yeah, let's go take it for a test ride. So why would you need index shifting? Isn't friction best? Yep, I think friction is best in most scenarios. But if you are a grav dad, or if you are roadie curious, any sort of speed freak, you know who you are. Index shifting is pretty helpful if you're trying to keep up with somebody who also has index shifting. You probably find this a lot with, uh, with certain bikes you ride. If you ride with a friend group who's all riding the same sort of bike and on the same page as far as their bike technology goes, you'll tend to stay with those friends and ride with them because you're all enjoying the same. If I'm just cruising or I'm not interested in keeping up with someone, if I'm just chilling, like what I ordinarily promote, Friction. shifting is great. I generally prefer down tube shifting because it's the absolute simplest and it's the lightest and it's super easy to change your bars out. And I switch things around a lot, so if you haven't noticed. Thanks for noticing if you have noticed. Mountain Laurel. That's the Connecticut State Flower. I gotta do some cleaning. I got workbenches all over the yard. In there too. All right, I wanna show you an example. I'll show you an example of See, there was that Suntour Cyclone front derailleur that I'm using on my beach club, again with an Altegra rear derailleur. And what do we got here? Oh yeah, 10 speed record. I've got my Grav Dad bike. You remember this from the last video. Uh, we are shifting uh, Centaur shifters. These have real nice tactile paddles, reminiscent of the uh, Simplex Retro Friction down tube shifters. Just feels really nice in your hand. Uh, I don't know if you could see it, but we're using an XTR M952, the classic. Shifting a big old range, that's a 32, 1132 in the rear, and a 2642 up front. What derailleur do we have up here? Oh, of course, a Kepignolo, oh, a Kepignolo Athena, 11 speed. So, I mean, really, mix and match, everything seems to work, folks, uh, when you're running eight speed in the rear with that Kepignolo up front. Down in here, down in here, I've got all of my cassettes. got pretty much everything in here ranging from 8 speed 8 speed to 10 speed 12 Let's see you, know, you got some different spacing but it's all you know it's all the same it fits on the same hub free hub body you can sometimes find a nice range but a lower quality Campagnolo cassette that fix, fits on a Campagnolo free hub body. This being an old record hub, 10 speed era, and a 10 speed cassette. Listen to that free hub. Campagnolo sounds really nice, doesn't it? All these derailers here, yeah, these will all work. These will all work with your Kipik Nolo, Shramping Nolo, Shimana Nolo, 10 to 8 transmission system. This is cutting edge technology, folks. Maybe not this one. 
This is what the newer style Campagnolo levers look like. These are super comfortable. I do. These are 11 speed and you know the fun thing about 11 speed is that the spacings are so tight on 11 speed that um, the difference between gears, the ratios don't really matter. So you could run a Shimano 11 speed cassette just fine with Campagnolo 11 speed shifters. This used to be my playground. This is what my brain looks like. So, just try things. I'd love to know uh, some of your own findings, if you've already done them or if you're about to do them. Uh, let me know in the comments what works for you and what doesn't. Well, hello there again. That's it, folks. I hope you subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, and subscribe a few more times, and that you like this video, and that you like me, and that you like my bikes. And remember, as always, these videos are sponsored by Ultra Dynamico and Ron's Bikes. Thank you, folks. Have a nice weekend.